Services. It's the Cube covering HPE Big Data Conference 2016. Now here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back to Boston, everybody. This is our wrap. This is the end of day two, two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. The Cube is the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. We like to go out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. Paul Gillen, it's really a pleasure working with you again. It's been a while. Always, Dave. So, uh, you got a little uh, Kool-Aid injection, which is less of a Kool-Aid injection than you would normally get at, a, at an event like this. Lower key, uh, but, but in your introduction really to the the Vertica and the HPE big data community. Uh, Vertica 8, you know, combinations, you know, bringing together the whole autonomy, Vertica, open systems, or open source you know, community ethos that they've done, that product of Haven, um, starting to get some market traction. Uh, we heard from a number of, of customers that were using it, some paying, some not. Um, but so, you see HPE, we had Robert Youngjohns on, he was told us, back in June at Discover that he had you know, trimmed some of the fat, they sold off Tipping Point to Trend Micro, rationalizing some of the organization, all along, all, all the while Vertica chugging along, sort of doing, doing pretty well. Um, swirling rumors about private equity, really people aren't sure what's going to happen to this division, but, but nonetheless, this tight-knit group within Vertica seems to be doing pretty well. Um, Seems to be almost an enclave in and of itself, isn't it? I mean, we didn't hear, we heard nothing about HPE hardware uh, right. during during this conference. Oh yeah, nothing they're hardware about HPE agnostic. Storage. I, I mean, this was a, this was about software, it was about analytics, uh, about database, and and um, uh, it was almost like HPE, you know, was was just a uh, an addendum. Well, and and that underscores um, the challenge and I think the opportunity. I, I mean, I always felt that. I've said for years, HP's got to do, HPE now does to do better in software, it has to have a larger contribution from software, that's got to be a fundamental part of its strategy. I'm not sure it is. I'm not sure that Meg's goal is to be relevant in the software business anymore. It certainly was back when the board, way back when under Apotheker bought Autonomy, they saw that as an opportunity. Mark Andreessen you know, sits on the board and was saying software was going to eat the world and so they took that to heart. Um, it seems like HPE is comfortable being an arms dealer to the cloud uh, and duking it out with Dell as the you know, alternative to cloud, public cloud. And you know what, that, uh, that kind of duopoly is not necessarily a bad business. But it's not a duopoly, it's only a duopoly on these shores. I mean, you've got all of the, the, the Chinese competitors, you've got, uh, I mean, hardware just seems to me to be a race to the bottom. And, and uh, IBM got out of that business, I think that was a smart move. Uh, I question why HP would want to double down on the hardware business when it's clear that software is where the is where the growth is going to be, uh, where the margins are. Uh, it's I mean they've got a, a, a diamond in the rough here with with Vertica. Clearly, a product that uh, the customers love, a product that I think they did a good job at this conference, at least as a, for a newcomer like me, of defining where Vertica sits in the stack. You know, it's not a competitor to Hadoop. It's a it's a complementary to Hadoop. It's not a, a, you know analytics on production data like Microsoft and, and SAP are doing. It's a dedicated analytics engine. Uh, they did a good job of defining Vertica, the, the strategy for Vertica as being go where the data is. And I think there's going to be you know we're going to hear Internet of Things kind kind of uh, evolutions coming out of that as they uh, you know, look what GE is doing. A series that the Cube just did with GE uh, on their Predicts project. GE is very much focused on getting getting analytics close to, the, close to the source of the data. Because when you have to detect a failing machine component on the factory floor, you can't afford to send that data back to the cloud and analyze it, you've got to make that decision there. And I was hearing the same kind of message here from HPE, and that's, that's going to be powerful as the Internet of Things comes, on, comes online. Uh, so I want, to, I want to pick up on that theme, you know, the, the hardware, you know, race to the bottom, why would HPE you know, want, to, want to be in the hardware business? And, and it's interesting, brings up an interesting conversation. I think the answer is, well, they're good at it, okay. They, they've learned how to make money in a lower margin environment, um, but very clearly margins are getting depressed in this business. EMC couldn't go it alone, right? It was too much pressure from Wall Street, a lot of pressure on margins, a lot of pressure on stock buybacks, funding R&D, and maintaining 60% gross margins, high 50s, you know, pushing down. 
And so very, very difficult business. So you've got to have a lower cost structure. That's clear. You're bringing up a point on China, which is really interesting. Now, I will say this. Ever since I've been in this business, which is now becoming a long time, people have been saying the hardware business is dead. We saw it with the mainframe. We saw it with open systems. You know, we're seeing it now again with, with cloud. We'll see. China is a real wild card. There's no doubt about it. And you're bringing up an excellent point. China wants to be self-sufficient. It's got like, I don't know, some number, four out of the 10 top supercomputers, you know, from a performance standpoint, might even be higher than that. By the end of the decade, it's going to be, you know, independent in terms of being able to, to, to fuel uh, microprocessors without Intel, right? It's got its own version of Linux operating system, um, and the Chinese government is clearly trying to buy time with, for, you know, Huawei and Lenovo and the likes of others, and so that's, a really interesting dynamic and a scary one. Does, does the whole hardware business go to the, the way of the disk drive business, right? And, uh, uh, you, it I appears. Think the, trend, the trends, it, it, certainly if, if HP, HPE can find a way to make hardware into a thriving, growing business, they certainly will be bucking the conventional wisdom. Well, and, and, and Oracle's trying to buck the conventional wisdom with, by building the sort of iPhone for, yeah, for the enterprise. Yeah, and they have their exadata machine. And, and I mean, certainly, uh, you know, Nutanix, I mean, there are, there are new plays in hardware that are uh, that are exciting and growing. Well, but even Nutanix, I mean, okay, yeah, appliance or not, but it's it's all about the software in in, in that case, you know, software defined, and so so HPE potentially, not potentially, it is basically saying we are going to be an arms dealer to the cloud, a high volume, you know, lower margin supplier, exact opposite of what IBM is doing. IBM getting out of hardware. You said it was a good move. It was a good move for IBM, but. IBM doesn't like hardware. Hardware's kind of a schlocky business. IBM uh, used to like hardware yeah, a lot. And they're not really a <laughs> schlocky company. Right, yeah. well, the hardware has no. changed. And but so, it's going to be really interesting to see where this whole thing goes, what HPE does with its software division. It needs to provide clarity. Hopefully at this earnings call, we'll, we'll get some visibility on that and really understand you know, if all these rumors are true or if they can put them to bed. It's likely that there's they're exploring these strategic options, as you pointed out yesterday, they have to. Well, they have their earnings announcement, I believe, coming next week, and that's and they're certainly going to be asked about that on the earnings call, uh, and they're going to have to, uh, they have to do something about the these rumors of, of uh, taking a private, taking the company private. Uh, it's, I'm sure it's a huge distraction inside, inside HPE right now for the employees, uh, so they've got to make some sort of, of statement that guides, you know, that, that, that directs people to, what, uh, to where they're looking. Um, and I, if the company goes private and private equity, you have to really wonder what the hardware, what's going to happen in the hardware division, because the whole history of private equity in this, in this field has been to get rid of hardware. Uh, private investors don't like hardware because they see it as a race to the bottom. Mm, I don't know if that's true. I mean, Seagate went private equity and then came. So there's, there's been money to made. You saw Dell go go private equity. Well, I actually, you know, we'll see what happens there. But I actually think Dell's going to make a lot of money uh, on this deal. Um, again, lots to be seen, uh, but, but the interesting thing to me is the trend in private equity with companies like you know, BMC, uh, Click is now going private, obviously Dell, uh, EMC now <laughs> private, potentially HPE, or at least maybe, this, uh, maybe a part of HPE. Rackspace. Rackspace, private equity I think sees these undervalued tech companies as an opportunity to make, make money in the longer term. But to do that, there's got to be investment. It's not just going to be suck the cash out and collapse the company. It's going to be invest, reposition, yeah. sell off some assets, refocus, Clearly. maybe float uh, it I again. I think we're seeing a sort of a new breed of private equity investor come online now that is actually looking at, at uh, companies, uh, at acquiring these companies as an opportunity uh, as, they, as they are trying to, to um, pivot their business models away from software licenses into more of a cloud subscription model. They, they can get some breathing room yes. uh, by going private Infor, for- Infor, a great example. Yeah, they Charles go Phillips private company. for three or four years, yep. make that pivot out of public view, and then and then uh, perhaps come out again. I do want to, you, since you brought up uh, IBM, and, uh, and we both brought up IBM, one very in-your-face statement that Robert Young Johns yeah. uh, made today was about taking on Watson directly. They see the, um, 
the Haven uh, APIs as being a superior alternative to Watson. Uh, they see IBM as taking Watson very much in vertical industry directions, uh, ad tech, uh, retail, healthcare, uh, which is not a bad strategy for Watson, but they think that HPE can focus more on those, those uh, horizontal uh, segments such as, such as uh, manufacturing and, and marketing. Um, and uh, he's inviting uh, developers to try them both. You know, use the Watson APIs, use the Haven APIs, and he says we'll beat them. And that's pretty in your face. Well, so we're doing that. So I was texting this morning when I saw that video. We got our developers and our product team to start playing around with it. You know, the results aren't there yet, but we're doing a little bake-off with just one of the APIs, the, the, the video translation, you know, transcription, which is of course a you know, big business for us. We oh, do a yeah. lot of video. Uh, we use Google today. We're going to test and see how the Haven API stacks up against it and make sure we're using it properly to see. Uh, there's a lot of robust you know, uh, capabilities, we're told, within the Haven API. There's 70 of them more than what's in Watson. Now that in and of itself doesn't mean much, but, and we played around with the Watson APIs uh, a couple years ago, and they were really immature. More recently, playing around more, they're getting better. Still not quite there yet, so you know, it's exciting to see the marketing videos, but when you put the, the APIs in the hands of the practitioners is when you see all the warts. So I think we still have some a ways to go there, but I come back to HPE's software business, and I've been asking the question, or I've been making the statement, HP's got to do more in software. What has it got to do to be you know, more relevant in, in software? Security, obviously, a good business for them. Vertica, obviously, a good business for them. It's just sort of piece parts that Robert Young Johns is trying to bring together. I think you're right, Vertica is a diamond in the rough. No matter what happens, that is a winner. We talked yesterday about, about Vertica sort of being in between the enterprise data warehouse and the big sucking sound of a dupe and a viable platform to make money in big data. Yeah, I, I think your point yesterday about Hadoop, uh, about the big sucking sound, is, is an opportunity for HPE, where clearly uh, you know, Hadoop is sort of entering the trough and, uh, and there's a, a lot of disappointment now with the, with the shortcomings of that platform, not necessarily from a technical perspective, but just an implementation perspective. And HPE has a, an alternative uh, or a complement, uh, depending on how you see it, to Hadoop that is clearly, uh, that, that is well, world class, that is, is you know, battle tested, uh, is supported by a, a, very, a respected and reputable company, and they have an opportunity here to uh, perhaps to take some of those Hadoop implementations that are floundering now over the complexity issue and bring them into the light with a really robust analytics engine. Um, one of the things that, that HPE, if they're going to, to bring the software business more to the fore, uh, needs to do is talk about it more. And we don't hear uh, HP, uh, HPE executives talking a lot about the company as a software company. And that may be just my own perception, but... Well, they used I, to uh, they used to talk about how they were sixth largest in the world and they had aspirations and, and that they're, they've toned that down, probably for obvious reasons. But, but regardless, Young John's kind of laid it out. He said, developers are driving infrastructure decisions. Um, the world is going SaaS, no mm -hmm. question about it. Line of businesses are making decisions, the whole shadow IT thing. Open source is a, is a major factor. You have to con contend with it. Um, containers and microservices are a new trend to allow portability. You've got to plug into that. And their big bet is on analytics. And that, to me, is how HP you know, becomes relevant uh, in this whole software discussion, is it focuses on analytics, keeps, keeps focusing on R&D, it offers choice, um, it leverages autonomy, yeah, okay, it overpaid for autonomy, but there's tech there. Well, maybe, there's, maybe, there's maybe real long tech term there. that'll Right, uh, maybe, right, figure uh, out how to make off. that work. Massive global distribution channel and partnerships, you know, like the one with, with Microsoft. So take the, the Young John's playbook and the H HPE strengths to the extent that it remains part of HPE and you could have a winning formula. Uh, another thing I just want to point out, Dave, that, that Young John said was the days of a huge data store are gone. Mm. And um, which is kind of a, uh, you know, kind of an anti-big data statement, but I think, I think it's actually a pro-big data statement because what he's saying is that data, we, we need to save everything. Right? He yeah. said that on the stage this morning. We need to, to go into the future expecting that we will save all of our data. Well, you can't do that in one central data store. So you've got to figure out a way 
to work with that data when it's at the edge, you know, right. when it's in the department, some of it's in the cloud, some of it's on premise, that's going to be a big architecture. And that's challenge. a shot at Oracle, obviously, right? Yeah. So, okay, and that's a whole other di dynamic <laughs> that we don't have time to talk about. All right, I think we've got to wrap here. Um, been, again, great working with you. Two and days you of, of awesome content. Our colleagues out in, in California are still going live. Uh, check that out on siliconangle.tv. Stu Miniman, John Furrier, and the whole team out there. Um, Alex, Patrick, Greg, Miriam, thanks very much, you guys. Awesome team. Awesome team. John, fantastic. Um, okay, so we are, let's see, what's next for us? The, the fall season's coming up. We got many, many shows. We got a, we got a show at the Rosewood next week, right? Uh, we got Riverbed coming up. And uh, we got Big Data NYC as Speaking part of Speaking of going private, Strata. Riverbed. Yeah, another one, Riverbed, right? They're, they're coming out of the woodworks. IBM Edge is coming up, Oracle Open World is coming up. These are all shows that theCUBE's going to be at, and, and then some. So check it out, check out siliconangle.tv for our upcoming schedule. Uh, check out wikibon.com for all the research, and siliconangle.com, you'll see Paul's work and, and his team, and Rob Hof and, and Kristen Nicole and others uh, who have been live blogging this stuff um, you know, daily, so thanks for all your efforts. And thanks for watching, thanks to our community, thank you to our sponsor, HP. We're out, this is theCUBE, we'll see you next time. Cool.